Hello everybody. The eruption from the Schwarzenegg system in Iceland is still ongoing, with the two-week anniversary being tomorrow, on Saturday, March 30th. If you are a volcano watcher, you know this eruption is the black sheep during the current episode in the Schwarzenegg system, as the previous three eruptions only lasted for two days at most. During these 14 days, quite a lot has happened. Activity has been narrowed down to a few craters, which have began to resemble those seen in the Fagradalsfjall eruptions. The total output of the eruption has reached second place of all the seven since 2021. It still has a long way to go to reach the top, where the first or the Geldingadalir eruption sits. A mine or a quarry, which had supplied material for the barriers, was filled with lava, which basically means the eruption sabotaged us. In the areas marked on screen, the lava field has reached the same height as the barriers, which stand at 4 meters tall. Fortunately, lava doesn't seem to be in a hurry to flow over them, and our construction workers have began making them taller, using nothing other than the fresh lava itself. A little payback for the quarry incident. After Easter, they'll go back to the good old gravel and upgrade a larger section of the walls, likely to 8 or 9 meters. Gas has been a real problem since the eruption began, even causing one person, an employee of the Blue Lagoon, to be hospitalized. After being stable since the first day of the eruption, activity began to drop on March 23rd, only to stabilize again the next day. As of the making of this video, tremor charts suggest activity might be decreasing again. More recently, wildfires have begun to break out as the weather has been nice. So our firefighters are back in business after a few months break. But wildfires were also a problem during the little rooted eruption in Fagradalsfjall from July to August last year. Askja has also made the news again as the largest earthquake in the area in quite some time struck on March 25th, followed by a small earthquake swarm. But how large is the lava field in the ongoing eruption? Is lava still flowing towards the ocean? How much is left of the eruption? Well, let's check out the details. Beginning with the lava field. The current outline looks something like this. There are two main lava flows. One is to the south, while the other is to the west. The latter one is the troublemaker, as it entered the quarry Mel Holes Nauma. As I mentioned in the beginning, this mine was used to supply material for barrier construction, meaning this was a bit unfortunate. As of the making of this video, lava is still flowing in that direction, but is mostly spreading out, as the terrain there is pretty flat. The lava flow heading south is doing something similar, spreading out, with the most notable changes being, as Geology Hub mentioned in his recent video, the coverage of so-called Kaibukas, as are small patches or islands of older rocks in a sea of new lava. If you also want to know more about gas-related things, check out Geology Hub and Just Icelandic. The southernmost edge of the lava field, which was an active lava flow in the first few hours of the eruption, is not so active anymore. It has probably not even moved 2.54 cm, which is an inch in freedom units, since day 1 or 2, as the output of the eruption hasn't been sufficient to move lava flows at such distances from the eruption site. And that means lava is not going to reach the ocean during this eruption. In total, the lava field covers around 6 square kilometers which makes it the largest of all the seven eruptions since 2021. The volume of erupted lava 
is somewhere between 28 and 32 million cubic meters, based on output levels from our experts. They currently estimate the output to be at 9.5 cubic meters per second, which it has probably been at since March 24th, when activity decreased a bit. Before March 24th, it was estimated to be at 14.5 cubic meters per second. As of the making of this video, the tremor charts seem to suggest activity decreased a tiny bit yesterday, indicated by the green and blue lines. Whether this decrease will continue or the eruption has stabilized again is uncertain, with the only solution being to wait. There may also have been no decrease at all, and these are just slight fluctuations in readings. Visually, there hasn't been any decrease on the eruption site in the past two or three days, as seen from Isaac's live streams. If you don't know who Isaac is, I'll leave a link in the description. His drone live streams from the eruption sites are next level. During Isaac's live stream today, March 29th, I noticed the small vent inside the second largest crater was still going, but I thought it had died on March 24th. So, the eruption still seems to have some puff left, and GPS data suggests there's still magma flowing into the chamber under Schwarzenegge, as, instead of showing subsidence expected during an eruption that's emptying a magma chamber, it shows slight uplift. This means, as long as there's magma flowing into the chamber, and the path from that chamber to the surface is uninterrupted, the eruption could go on for some time. This makes it pretty hard to get an idea of how long it lasts, as it could just end suddenly due to something blocking this path. So, it's anyone's best guess. Based on what we've seen during past eruptions on the peninsula since 2021, this decrease we had on March 23rd suggests the eruption won't last as long as, for example, the Geldingadalir eruption, which went on for six months. Instead, I think it's more likely we'll get something like Meradalir or Litlirútur, which lasted three and four weeks respectively. During those eruptions, there were these dips in activity a few days apart throughout the eruption. So, I say we might have around two weeks left. What are your thoughts? Do you think it'll last longer or shorter? Then there's Askja. Since 2021, Askja has been on our watch list as then, uplift began and has now, in three years, totaled 70 centimeters. In August of 2023, uplift stalled and GPS readings remained flat until November, when uplift resumed, albeit at a slightly lower pace as before the pause. On March 25th, a magnitude 3.5 earthquake struck in the northern part of Askja's caldera, but this is the largest earthquake in the area since 2022. This earthquake was undoubtedly due to the rising tension this area is subjected to due to uplift. However, it does not mean an eruption is imminent or that an intrusion has started. We could still be a long way from that, years or even decades. We unfortunately can't tell if Aska is getting any closer to erupting, so we'll just have to continue our wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.